All right. So are you ready to dive into a world that you might not know even exists? I'm ready. It's the electric unicycle community. Okay. We're talking about not those clunky unicycles you might remember from like your childhood or whatever, yeah. but these are like high tech self balancing machines yeah. that can really hit some serious speeds. Mm. And our guide to this world is a guy who calls himself Duffman. Okay, cool. Now, what makes this deep dive unique is that yeah. we're not looking at, you know, polished articles or marketing materials or any of that stuff. Right. We're going through a raw, unfiltered live stream okay. that Duffman, a well-known EU enthusiast, did for his community. Wow. And get this, it ran for over five hours. Five hours. Making it his longest one yet. That is a long live stream. It is a long live stream. I was a little intimidated at first, but honestly, it's like eavesdropping on a conversation with a bunch of friends okay. who are really, really into EUs. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. I mean, you're really sucked into this tight knit community like right away. Yeah. <laughs> Duffman is constantly shouting out viewers by name. Yeah. Dale Finan. It's clear he knows these people. He knows them. You know, yeah. their writing styles, their inside jokes. Yeah. And they're right there with him, too. Yeah. Firing off questions, yeah. sharing their own experiences. Totally. Even dropping in for like surprise visits midstream. It's like this constant chaotic yes. flow of information and banter. And Duffman is right in the middle of it all. Yeah. Just trying to keep up while cracking jokes and sipping on his beer. Oh, yeah. That's part of Duffman's charm. Did I mention he drinks beer throughout the entire live stream? He does. He's incredibly knowledgeable about EUs, but he's also just this totally relatable guy who's not afraid to be himself. Totally. Like he's making self-deprecating jokes about how fast he's going through these beers. Right. He's talking about his girlfriend, his injuries. Yeah. Even his struggles with getting older. Yeah. It's that openness, that willingness to just be real with his viewers. Yeah. That really drew me in. Same. Not just about EUs. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. about life, and it's something that I think we can all relate to, even if we've never set foot on an electric unicycle. Totally. But speaking of EUs, yeah. what are some of the things yeah, that... Yeah, what are they buzzing about? Duffman and his community are buzzing about. Well, one topic that comes up a lot... Yeah. And for good reason is safety. Yeah. Duffman actually had a pretty nasty crash recently, where his tire blew out at 36 miles an hour. Oh, Wow. We're talking a ripped off valve stem. Oh, geez. A sudden loss of control. That sounds scary. It does. He's lucky he walked away from that one. Yeah. And it really gets everyone thinking, you know, how much risk is acceptable when you're pushing these machines to their limits? It's a question that really resonates throughout the entire live stream. Yeah. And you can feel the shift in tone when he talks about it. Right. It goes from you know, lighthearted banter to this really serious reflective discussion. It's like a reminder that this hobby, while incredibly fun and freeing, comes with some inherent dangers. Exactly. Mm. And Duffman does not shy away from those dangers. Right. He talks about, you know, the importance of protective gear. Yeah. Knowing your limits and respecting the power of these machines. Mm -hmm. He even gets kind of philosophical. Does he? Saying that the crash was life realigning. Wow. Which I think speaks volumes about the impact that it had on him. Yeah, and it's not just him. Yeah. The chat is filled with viewers sharing their own experiences with crashes and close calls and moments where they realized they were pushing a little too hard. Right. So it's like this collective awareness of the risks uh -huh. and a shared responsibility for each other's safety that emerges from these conversations. It makes you realize that this community isn't just about the tech. Yeah. It's about the people. Yeah. It's about supporting each other learning from each other's mistakes mm -hmm. and pushing the boundaries of what's possible while also staying safe. But it's not all doom and gloom. There's a ton of excitement buzzing around new EU models totally. and the technological advancements that are happening. At like a breakneck pace. At a breakneck pace. Yeah. We hear Duffman geeking out over these new wheels yeah. with advanced suspension systems, uh -huh. crazy range, yeah. and features that seemed like science fiction just a few years ago. He's specifically talking about models like the InMotion V14 and the Kingsong S22. Oh, yeah. Which are basically the supercars of the EU world. Okay. Imagine a unicycle that can handle off-road trails, climb stairs. Wow. And hit speeds that would make your heart skip a beat. I can only imagine. And then there are the upcoming models like the Bagode EX-Way and the Extreme Bowl of 22. Oh, right. Those are still shredded in secrecy, but the rumors are swirling and the anticipation in the chat. 
is palpable. You can practically hear the drool hitting the keyboards as Duffman talks about this stuff. Oh, totally. And he's not just reading specs off of a website. Yeah. He's testing these wheels out in the real world, riding up and down stairs, right. mm -hmm. taking them off-road, yeah. really putting them through their paces. So, you know, he's giving you the unvarnished truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. And that's where his relatability shines through again. Yeah. You hear him struggling to keep up with the chat, admitting he doesn't have all the answers, mm -hmm. even getting frustrated when things go wrong. Oh. It's a reminder that even the experts are still learning, still yeah. figuring things out. And that's okay. It makes the whole experience feel so much more authentic, you know, yeah. more human. You're not just listening to a tech review. Right. You're getting a glimpse into the mind of someone who is truly passionate about EUs. Yeah. And who's willing to share that passion, warts and all, with the world. And that's just the first couple of hours of the live stream. Oh, wow. Buckle up, because things are about to get even more interesting as we delve deeper into Duffman's world. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our deep dive into the world of electric unicycles as seen through the eyes of Duffman. You know, as we get deeper into this live stream, I'm struck by how Duffman embodies this fascinating contradiction. Yeah. He's clearly an expert. Right. He knows the tech inside and out. Uh -huh. He's testing new models and he's deeply connected to this community. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. he's just this regular guy hanging out, right. drinking beer and sharing his life with whoever wants to listen. Yeah. It's that authenticity that makes him so relatable. Uh -huh. Like he's not afraid to admit when he doesn't know something. Right. Or when he messes up. Right. And I think that really resonates with viewers. Uh huh. Because it mirrors their own experiences trying to navigate this constantly mm -hmm. evolving world of technology. Exactly. We all feel that pressure to keep up, to be uh -huh. in the know. Yeah. And Duffman just lets us see that even the experts are figuring it out as they go along. Absolutely. And speaking of figuring things out, yeah. let's talk about that crash. Yeah. Remember he wiped out at 36 miles an hour when his tire blew out? Oh, yeah. He doesn't sugarcoat it. No. He goes into detail about what happened, uh -huh. how it felt in the aftermath. Yeah, you hear him say, like, I'm lucky I'm not dead. Right. And you can almost feel the weight of that statement. That incident becomes a catalyst for a larger conversation about safety, oh. which we mentioned earlier, uh -huh. is a huge topic in the EU community. It is. And what's interesting is that Duffman doesn't shy away from discussing the risks. No, he doesn't. He acknowledges that riding at high speeds, weaving through traffic, pushing the limits of what these machines can do, uh -huh. it's inherently dangerous. It is. He even reflects on how the crash has impacted his own riding habits, right. how it's made him more cautious, yeah. more aware of his own mortality. He even uses the phrase life realigning. Right. Which suggests that this wasn't just a physical setback, yeah. but like a moment of genuine introspection. And what's really cool is that the chat is right there with him. Totally. Sharing their own stories of close calls, reflecting on the risks, and offering support. It highlights the fact that this community isn't just about pushing the limits. Yeah. It's about having each other's backs. Uh-huh. It's about recognizing that this hobby comes with these inherent dangers. Yeah. And that by talking about those dangers openly and honestly, they can all learn from each other's experiences. Right. And become safer riders. So we've talked about safety. Yeah. But let's get back to the fun stuff. Uh oh yeah. What are some of the innovations that have Duffman and his viewers geeking out? Well, tubeless tires are a hot topic. <gasps> Tubeless tires. Like you'd see on a high-performance mountain bike. Oh, okay. Duffman's testing them out on his EU, a Master V4, for those keeping track. Uh-huh. And he's going into detail about the pros and cons. Okay. He's talking about how they can potentially prevent blowouts like the one he experienced. Right. But they also require a bit more maintenance and know-how. So he's planning on really putting them through the ringer. Oh, yeah. Riding up and down stairs, yeah. curbs, whatever he can find. He's going to find out what their limits are. It's that hands-on approach that makes his insights so valuable. Exactly. He's not just speculating. Right. He's out there getting his hands dirty, trying things out, mm -hmm. and reporting back to the community. He's like a one-man research and development team. And then, of course, there's the buzz around all the new EU models. Right. He's clearly excited about the advances in suspension technology yeah. and the overall performance of these newer wheels. He's talking about the InMotion V14, the Kingsong S22. Right. These are the top-of-the-line machines yeah. that can handle pretty much anything you throw at them. Pretty much. And he's also mentioning the Bigo X-Way and the Extreme Bull F22, yeah. which are still in development but have the community 
buzzing with anticipation. Oh, wow. Imagine a unicycle that can carve through mountain trails like a dirt bike yeah. or cruise effortlessly through city streets at highway speeds. That's wild. That's where this technology is headed, and it's pretty mind-blowing. The chat is going crazy. I bet. With questions, speculation, <laughs> comparisons. And Duffman's trying his best to keep up, answer what he can, yeah. and manage expectations. But there's a flip side to this rapid innovation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The cost of these high-end wheels is a major barrier for a lot of people. Yeah. Duffman even calls the pricing stupid. Wow. Which is a pretty blunt assessment. Yeah. But it reflects the concern that these machines are becoming increasingly inaccessible to new riders. You've got inflation supply chain issues, the sheer cost of the technology. Yep. It all adds up. And then you've got competition from electric scooters and e-bikes, uh -huh. which are often more affordable and easier to learn. Right. So Duffman and his viewers are grappling with this tension. Yeah. The excitement of these technological advancements versus the worry that it's pricing people out of the hobby. Yeah, it raises questions about the future of the EU market, its growth potential, and its accessibility to a wider audience. Right. It's a complex issue, and there are no easy answers. But hey, let's lighten things up a bit. Okay. Remember those pit zoom mirror giveaways? Oh, you... Pure chaos. It was a train wreck in the best possible way. Yeah. Duff Men's trying to keep the giveaways fair mm -hmm. while simultaneously managing this chat that's moving at warp speed. It's impossible. People are entering multiple times accusations of cheating or flying. Oh, geez. And Duffman is just trying to keep it all together while cracking jokes and maintaining some semblance of order. It's a perfect example of what makes these live streams so unpredictable and entertaining. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen next. It's like a reality show, but with electric unicycles. Exactly. And I think it highlights the dynamic between Duffman and his audience. Uh-huh. It's not just a one-way broadcast. Right. It's uh a genuine back and forth. Yeah. He's constantly responding to comments. Yeah. Poking fun at himself. Yeah. And engaging with his viewers on a personal level. It's like hanging out with a friend. Right. Who happens to be an EU expert. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We've covered the community. Yeah. The tech, the safety concerns, the humor. Yeah. What else stands out to you as we continue our deep dive? You know, it's really fascinating. Yeah. We see Duffman's personal life come into focus even more in this section of the live stream. Okay. He starts talking about his relationships, his past marriages, his current girlfriend. Okay. He even mentions that he has a reminder in his Outlook calendar for his ex-girlfriend's upcoming birthday. Wow, that's a level of openness that you don't often see. Right. Especially from someone with a, a public platform. Especially online. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the trust he's built with his community. Uh-huh. They know he's not putting on a show. Right. He's just being himself. Yeah. Sharing his life, the good and the bad. And there are moments where the conversation takes unexpected turns. Yeah. Remember how we talked about Duff Man's reflections on getting older? Yeah. What well, comes up again in the context of him feeling his age after playing pickleball. Pickleball. He even compares himself to an 85-year-old man. Oh, no. It's both funny and poignant. And it sparks a discussion about fitness health yeah, and the importance of taking care of yourself, especially as you get older. You get older, yeah. It's a reminder that even though he's this EU guru, Yeah. He's dealing with the same realities of aging that we all are. We are. And it humanizes him even more, makes him even more relatable. Right. And then you have moments where the conversation veers into more controversial territory. Oh, yeah. He gets into a debate with the chat about passport bros. Passport bros. A term used to describe men seeking younger partners abroad. Oh, okay. He doesn't shy away from expressing his opinion. Okay. And it sparks a lively discussion about cultural differences societal norms, and personal choices. Interesting. And then, of course, yeah. he reminisces about that infamous alley cat race in New York City. Oh, yeah. Where riders navigated city streets at breakneck speeds, mm -hmm. dodging traffic and pedestrians. It sounds incredibly dangerous. It does. And it r raises questions about responsible riding and the yeah. limits of what's acceptable. Right. Even within a community that embraces risk-taking. These tangents reveal the diversity of opinions and experiences within the EU community. Uh -huh. It's not a monolithic group. No. There are a wide range of viewpoints, backgrounds, and experiences represented. So we're approaching the final hour of this epic live stream. We are. What are your key takeaways so far? For me, it's the power of authenticity. Okay. Duffman's willingness to be himself, flaws and all, is what makes him such a compelling figure. Yeah. He's knowledgeable, passionate but also incredibly down to earth. Huh. He's the friend you want to have a beer with. Right. 
and talk about life, EUs, and everything in between. And he's given us this incredible glimpse into the EU community. Yes. Its passions, its concerns, its triumphs, and its challenges. We've seen the rapid pace of innovation, the excitement surrounding new models. Yeah. But also the very real dangers and the concerns about rising prices and accessibility. Mm -hmm. And we've witnessed the camaraderie, the shared experiences, the willingness to support each other through thick and thin. It's a reminder that technology at its best can connect us. Yes. And create a sense of belonging. It is. Yeah. But hold on, we're not quite done yet. Right. We still have an hour left of live stream to unpack. We do. And it's in that final hour that things take a truly philosophical turn. Stay tuned for the final part of our deep dive. Welcome back, fellow deep divers. We are in the final stretch now of Duffman's Marathon live stream. Malauer. And things are getting deep. Yeah, it's almost like those late night philosophical conversations you might have with a friend after a few too many beers. Yeah. <laughs> Except this is happening with hundreds of people watching online. Exactly. Duffman really starts to open up about his personal life. His anxieties about the future, his thoughts on aging. Yeah. And it's not just a monologue. Right. The chat is right there with him, sharing their own experiences, offering words of encouragement. It's a really raw and honest conversation about life's big questions. What struck me was how Duffman talks about feeling every one of his 56 years. Yeah. He describes playing pickleball and feeling sore afterwards and then comparing himself to an 85-year-old man. Right. It's hilarious. Yeah but also kind of heartbreaking. You can hear the vulnerability in his voice, and it makes you realize that even someone as seemingly confident and outgoing as Duffman yeah. has insecurities and anxieties. He does. It's a reminder that we're all in this together, Yeah. facing similar challenges and navigating the ups and downs of life. And the chat responds with such empathy. Yeah. They share their own stories of aches and pains, offer advice on staying active, and just generally create this space of understanding and support. It's a beautiful example of how online communities can provide connection and support, even on topics as personal as aging. Totally. Yeah. And this whole theme of vulnerability continues yeah. as Duffman starts talking about his relationships. Uh -huh. He's surprisingly open about his two divorces, mm -hmm. his long-term relationship with Cindy, his experiences with dating. Yeah. You can almost feel him processing these experiences in real time, like reflecting on his past yeah. and trying to make sense of it all. It's a level of honesty that you rarely see, especially online. Yeah, it's like he's saying, hey, this is me, yeah. the good, the bad, and the messy. Right. And that's okay. And it creates the sense of trust and intimacy with his viewers. It does. It's like they're getting a glimpse behind the curtain, seeing the man behind the persona. Yeah, and what's amazing is that the chat doesn't judge. Right. They offer support, share their own stories, and create this sense of shared humanity. It makes you realize that these online communities aren't just about shared interests. Right. They can also be spaces for emotional connection and vulnerability. Totally. And as the live stream starts to wind down, the conversation takes kind of a philosophical turn. Okay. Duffman starts reflecting on his career, his passions, uh -huh. and what he wants to accomplish in the years ahead. What does he say? He talks about his YouTube channel and how it's become a form of therapy for him. He says it's not about the money. He even admits he doesn't make much from it. Right. It's about having a creative outlet, connecting with people, mm -hmm. and expressing himself authentically. It's refreshing to hear someone talk about their online platform yeah. in such a genuine and unpretentious way. It's not about chasing views oh, or yeah. monetizing everything. Yeah. It's about finding meaning and connection. Exactly. Okay. And it circles back to that theme of authenticity uh -huh. that we've been talking about throughout this entire deep dive. Right. Duffman is who he is, flaws and all. And that's what makes him so relatable and engaging. Yeah. So as we reach the end of this epic journey through Duffman's world, yeah. what are your final thoughts? Well, I'm left with a sense of hope and inspiration. We've seen the power of technology to connect people, to create communities, to foster vulnerability and understanding. We've witnessed a really passionate group of individuals grappling with real-world issues from safety concerns to the future of their hobby. And we've gotten a really intimate glimpse into the life of a man who's not afraid to be himself, warts and all. It's a reminder that even in this, like, vastness of the Internet, yeah. genuine human connection is still possible. It is. And it leaves me wondering what other passionate communities are out there just waiting to be discovered right. with their own stories to tell. And that, my friends, is the beauty of the deep dive. You never know where it will take you, but you are guaranteed to come out the other side with a fresh perspective and a renewed appreciation for the human experience. 
Thanks for joining us on this unforgettable journey.